All right, Warriors, we're going to do a breathing exercise, five seconds, five Mississippis. We're going to breathe in deep, hold it, and release together. And what we're wanting to do is just clear some space, man. Loop interrupters. For those of you who've been following me, you know what it's about. But those of you new to the channel, so you don't freak out, it's, our, it's providing our own brain fart. You know, narcissists are real masterful at providing this for themselves and you. In conversations, when they want to deviate, whenever it comes to a point where you're provoking them, they don't like it, notice how quick they are to change the subject. I mean, an immediate reverse. If you start paying attention to how narcissists operate when things don't go their way or when they're dealing with their own kind, now you're learning how to deal with narcissists. I call it reverse narcology. It's just because I like I like creating verbiage. <laughs> Sometimes it's it's more funnerist that way. And it, it's more easier bestest to remember. Don't you think? <laughs> Let's use this breathing exercise as a loop interrupter. Let's take it back a notch. Everybody gotta be so serious. It's just gotta be so serious all the time. <laughs> The only time to be thirst is when you got a narcissist fucking with you. That's when they realize they underestimated something. And look, you'll have taught them. They'll practice and exercise the five Mississippis more than you ever do. Because once they get a taste of running in to a connection with a warrior, they don't feel so good. It doesn't feel so good for them to have to start over all the time looking over their shoulders because now they pissed off the wrong one. You see, when you piss off a warrior or a warrior crosses your path, the only thing that can go through a narcissist's mind is knowing full well that the warrior they tried to destroy in the narcissist's mind you are a master because they're going to blame you for every failure whether it be personal or professional they can't help but think you had something to do with it because you're that good Hey, I hate to blow air up your own ass there, but that's how they take it, man. If you get them to a point where you can get you to just put your listening ears on among different gatherings where alcohol is being served, you start seeing how confessions start coming out after liquid confidence reaches a certain level. Oh, they start confessing. It's amazing. You bartenders in the audience or who have have had those positions or as bouncers, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Five seconds, warriors. Let's do a badass breathing exercise. We're going to breathe in deep. We're going to hold it. And we're going to release together. And what we want to do is just set aside... A smidgen, if you will, so that we can have a badass talk, a badass walk. Sometimes we may wander off a little to reminisce, and then we're going to find a solution. And remember, this is the mindset I want you to pay attention to. Are you listening from a place of the critic? Or from a place of being excited for something new new. Five Mississippis. Let's do this together without passing out. Five seconds. Come on. Release slowly. <laughs> Shake that shit off, y'all. I don't know if this damn thing is on, y'all. Hello, hello. Word of the day, concha, conchita, conchita.
This is a petrified concha. And this was one of my first archaeological Aristis discoveries. And I will put it one day in the in El Museo de Chico. El Museo de Chico. And it'll have just a bunch of little artifacts. <laughs> and necklaces and stuff that I've made. Y'all have to show y'all the rock tumbler one day. I might do a video where I just do a whole set of necklaces uh, from that rock tumble. But check this out, look. When narcissists can't find fault in you, and believe me, they're looking. Way before I remind you all the damn time to do background checks. I dare say narcissists don't have to be convinced of that. They do it automatically. That's why a bunch of them have contacts with people that are in leasing offices, realty companies, banking. They want access to someone who can do background checks on another level. You see, in those environments, they can find out what you're really worth, what your deposits are, what your P&Ls are. Warriors, narcissists, when they can't find fault in you, what do you think's left? Lies. Look, it's the only way a lie is born. It because the truth can't hurt you and it's a badass truth and look even your faults you're true to your own faults which means you're admired for taking ownership and responsibility I don't know about y'all but I apologize publicly on purpose Because it's our younger people that need to witness the right thing being done in a public way and how cool that looks. You see, the OG environment, there's two different kind of warriors. <laughs> and believe it or not, it's a damn shame I even have to share this with you. Stop what the fuck you're doing, look at me. There's two kinds of warriors. Y'all been following, following fucking imposters for a long time. Giving fancy titles and labels to, to shit, you know. Bottom line is, there's two different kinds of warriors. The kind that follow you in to a battle or a fight And you have that one group that wants to know what happened and whose fault was it. And you have the other kind of warrior who doesn't ask any questions, comes in swinging, and will ask questions later. Right, wrong, or indifferent, we place trust in our gut. You want to know why? Are you still looking at me? Because you defend authenticity. You associate with badasses. And those are worth defending. It's a given they'd be in the right. And sometimes, when you poke a fucking bear, the tribe comes in, without question. See, this is friendships that don't require explanation. You're moved, compelled, and that's what it means to defend those you love and admire, you defend their honor in their absence, as if they were standing there. Warriors, I want you to understand something. There hadn't been a single connection that I haven't told that to. Every connection 
has heard from my lips. All I've ever asked is that you treat me with the same respect I treat you with, and in my absence, that you hold me true to the integrity I've earned and defend my honor in my absence. But I forgot to tell them, because this is the true measure of what going from associations to friend to great friend. And a couple more tests like that, when word gets back to the warrior, that's a brotherhood earned. Not commanded, observed, and earned. Not by one, by many. Because you live by actions. You have a moral compass that guides you. And you're not allowing your ego to get ahead and call shots. You use five Mississippis to temper so you can identify why you feel the way you feel. And especially, more than ever, you already know how to guard your damn selves against the negative vibes, negative energy. If you don't want to talk spirit talk, you want to go logical? You know what mental illness, you know how it operates, you know how it functions. It's, it's uh, robotic ways, right? Temperament. The eye roll is a huge, huge indicator. In fact, in the relationship counseling communities, therapists can tell by looking at the husband and the wife what the probabilities are of success before therapy even starts by just body language. 95% failure is guaranteed if one or both roll their eyes while the other speaks. 95% because they've already detached. Emotional constipation has already happened way before it got to that point. Warriors, what I want you to pay special attention to, and I heard uh, it was a Navy SEAL, Jacko Wilco, or Wilkes, uh, identified it best. And I want, it's worth repeating. The blood rush is your gut feeling materializing this way. It's endorphins kicking in rapidly. Blood immediately being taken away from other major organs and applying it to muscle mass. Preparing you to become the warrior that you're going to need to be. Your body is doing this reactively because your mind, damn it, is supposed to do the guiding and thinking with logic, not emotion, as to when, when to spring to action all this blood. It's just on the ready without needing to be directed to do so. Preemptively, this is your gut, fight or flight. This is your body in alignment, fully trusting, without having to ask the warrior one method, whose fault is it? How did this get started? No, your body automatically goes into the second warrior mode, huh? We'll discuss this shit later. I'm coming in swinging. Mind, guide us. What do you see 
here. We got your radio over here. This is your gut feeling. If it is going into that mode, I dare say you need to listen to your body. It's been with you a lot longer. That's your gut check. Warriors, the only way to lose something priceless and realize it is when a narcissist fails to see what others see in you. And that goes for narcissists. I call them dumbasses with crowns, but because they, they crown themselves. Now, lawyers, this is what I mean. The only way to lose something priceless, it's not that you're perfect. No one is saying that. But what many fall short on is they put too much so much weight on love and love alone. And they lose touch with respectful cooperation. The issue isn't love. You realize love don't cover shit. It just makes you more tolerant, resentful. What you found is you built trust on something that didn't prove itself worthy. And you, and you kept trying to act like you were getting somewhere with it. And they kept trying to make you believe it. The real resourceful with that. Warriors. You know what's missing in society nowadays? <laughs> Remember them oleander bushes that used to be next to the house? Every house had an oleander bush in the churches. You know, back in the day, you didn't have a good ass whooping until you had to go pick your own damn switch. Or you got hit with a bamboo wooden spoon. Yeah, I grew up in the kind of environment where mom used to reach in her purse while driving and snatch a wood spoon and put it on her dash. And you could hear a pin drop in that Impala. Y'all, every now and again we forget about the wooden spoon until somebody do something crazy and yell too loud and here it comes a swing and it doesn't matter if it hits your head, your shoulder, your arm, your hand, by the end of that long drive home, we had welt in different places parts. Because that hand was still on the steering wheel looking and this arm was just to getting it. We would hit that floorboard, y'all, so quick. <laughs> well, look. There's something to have been said with discipline. Not all, not all discipline is good discipline, you understand? But what we have to understand is when you come from toxicity, when you're raised around narcissists, they're self-teaching in an environment they don't want to be in themselves. And for most of us, it was plans that didn't work out. Warriors, for many of you, you were underestimated because narcissists thought, even for some of you, your own family, thought that they could abandon you, throw you to the streets without realizing this is the very environment where you came from, where you're respected, where you're thrived, and you have what's called street credit. Little did they know that what they consider hell, 
They know me by name. They underestimate many of you warriors because they truly didn't take the time to know your walk, to appreciate why you're so damn disciplined, why you make it look so easy in life, why you make poor look fun. Well, there's only so many of you that can navigate through chaos. You can't run from it. You have to learn also how to adapt and overcome. Reverse narcology is what's going to save you. Pay attention to how narcissists treat each other. Mira. Mirame. Look. <laughs> if you pay attention to how narcissists even eyeball each other, they speak to each other with facial features and body language unlike no other. It's like a thug knows a thug in the crowd. They see each other clearly and you can see the conversation across a room. I'm just saying. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> oh, y'all fixing to see some shit now. All right, y'all. Get out there and own it. Muchísimas gracias. Les mando besos y abrazos. Bendiciones. Send you hugs and kisses. And many blessings. Namaste, warriors. Oh, thanks for your support. Thanks so much for the, the, the visits to the Amazon wish list. Look, I want to thank... I got body wash and some magnet holders for my guns for inside the trailer. I want to thank Jennifer for that. Ah, that's so cool. So look. I'll be smelling like mango body wash from head to toe. More dish delicious -er -is -is to hide my man funk. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much. Warriors, your support and your remarks are so awesome. Thank y'all for encouraging each other. That's exactly what that's for. Until one day, you're right off that fucking couch owning it until then stay on it man it, it will get better I just need you to stay focused it's going to get better because you're going to learn to manage it right now it's managing you we're flipping the script Pay attention to the reverse narcology. Apply it. I need you to win a couple of little battles. You'll be kicking some ass. You'll be doing it in no time. Until then, it's never goodbye. Till next time. Namaste.